Hello everyone, myself uh, Venu, lecturer in mechanical engineering from Government Polytechnic, Varangal and uh, I am dealing the uh, subject uh, refrigeration and uh, air conditioning. So today's uh, video session or uh, today's topic is on uh, working of uh, ice plant and water cooler. And uh, here uh, in today's uh, session we will complete uh, these uh, uh, by looking at the layout of the complete ice plant and uh, the water cooler how the components are arranged and uh, how the working principle and what are the purpose of these uh, what is the purpose of the ice plant and water cooler how they are working and what is the principle uh, uh, used in these, uh, in these ice plant and water cooler so we will see all these things uh, in today's class and if you observe the previous video session of my uh, in the last uh, video session so we have started the applications of refrigeration so in that uh, we have seen the domestic refrigerator as a primary one domestic refrigerator and uh, the line diagram here seen the layout and uh, explanation regarding how it is getting the cooling effect what is the use of the domestic refrigerator so all the things we have seen and uh, in today uh, <coughs> so this is uh, the recap you can see various applications of uh, refrigeration construction and working of domestic refrigerator so coming to objectives after completion of this period so you are able to understood what the layout complete layout and uh, working of ice plant and uh, the application of ice plant and uh, next uh, we see some layout and working principle of the water cooler also so these are the objectives in uh, today's session so let us uh, start the today's session uh, the first application we are taking is uh, uh, the ice plant okay so before just i want to uh, give uh, some questions to you uh, it, it's a, these are the general questions so if you at any time if you are, if you are just uh, you are going to thought something uh, when you when you see these questions so every person will get these uh, questions when you see something regarding these uh, some how the food products are stored for a long period and how they are maintained perishable and uh, how they are transported from one place to other place they, they will not get damage right? because there is some temperature differences from place to place so how they are uh, stored for longer time so these are few questions you can get into your mind and also regarding the cool drinks also how the cool drinks can be cooled when there is uh, no power supply so this is also one important thing uh, you know the basic uh, thing that domestic refrigerator as we have seen in the previous class when you switch on the power uh, switch on switch on the supply what happens uh, after some time the whatever the products kept in the refrigerator will get cooled you take example of cool drinks also but when there is no power supply how the cooling effect can be maintained for longer time how the cool drinks uh, drinks can be get cooled next question how the ice blocks are produced you can observe the ice blocks are uh, placed at uh, you can see or uh, they are selling the sellers are selling the ice blocks at the outside places you can see okay by providing some insulating material around that and they are selling the ice blocks so very uh, large volume of ice blocks can be uh, sold at the outside so how they are produced so these are the few questions you are getting that what is the practical uses of ice blocks so some of them are purchasing the ice blocks a bigger ice blocks and they are uh, taking for different uses okay what are the those practical uses of ice blocks is there is a need is the there is a need uh, to produce the ice is it come is it need so you can get all the answers from these uh, things you know the basic uh, usage of the ice okay so ice is a, a, a need uh, element and uh, how they are produced uh, and what are those applications we can see all the things how they are 
uh, you can see the ice plan diagram here so you can get some idea regarding that okay so moving on to the main topic here ice plant so for a meanwhile you please observe the ice plant uh, the diagram or complete layout of the ice plant you can see the same similar questions again so compressor condenser dryer expansion wall a receiver and uh, at this last you can see there is a evaporator box in which there are ice cans so evaporator coil nothing but cooling coils are there so this evaporator tank can also be taken as brine tank so the question arised before this uh, layout we have seen that how uh, uh, without the power supply when the power supply is off how they are getting uh, how the temperature is maintained uh, for a longer time low temperatures can be maintained for a longer time in this ice plan okay so these are the things uh, you can see in this ice plan so these are the uh, few you can see that the components compressor you know all these explanations which uh, you can you have seen uh, in the last previous video session compressor condenser receiver dryer expansion wall and evaporator so the evaporator is uh, specially made for these ice plant where uh, you have to produce the ice cubes here the main purpose of the ice plant here is to produce the ice cubes so ice plant is used so it needs a special uh, arrangement in the evaporator so that uh, here those are the ice cans the evaporator coils or cooling coils and brine tank so in the brine tank at the bottom you can see some brine solution is filled you will see what is the importance of the brine solution okay i will give some basic example regarding the brine solution also right so let us uh, see say the construction part as a uh, mostly um, it requires a fresh or pure water to produce the ice cubes here and uh, so it consists of uh, uh, ms plate tank with insulating material so whatever the ice cans are there for um, which, where the ice is manufactured or ice is produced so the cans are uh, generally made with some uh, the mild steel plate tank with insulating material right because uh, when the water is making always in contact with that cans so it must and should be a non corroded one okay. so tank is filled with the secondary refrigerant to the required level that is the brine solution so there are uh, two types of refrigerant here in this one is a the primary refrigerant which is actually providing the cooling effect in the system which is flowing inside the pipes okay in the coil whatever the pipe piping system is there so in that pipe the primary refrigerant you can take that is a some freon groups like r12 or r22 whatever the refrigerant that is uh, taken as a primary refrigerant secondary refrigerant is present inside the brine tank that is a brine solution is a secondary refrigerant okay so it will it will be filled up to the required level or up to the uh, the level of the cans or just below the level of the cans so that brine tank uh, brine solution is filled we will see what is the importance of it right next uh, <clears throat> so here the ice cans are made with a galvanized iron sheet ice blocks uh, form and grow inward from the top can surface so it means uh, how the ice uh, it starts from the the boundaries of the cans okay and it will start the crystal, uh, the formation of the solid from outer surface and grow to the inwards okay from the top can surface it will starts and to the inward it will starts uh, the flowing it will come from the top and through the sides the ice formation will take place so air agitators are used to force dissolved gases and uh, solids to the center core of the can if you observe a small a very uh, a, just like a air, air air blocks will be created inside of the ice ice blocks if you see ice blocks small uh, just like defects can be seen in the ice blocks those are the dissolved uh, those are whatever the gases are there gas particles water all will be deposited at the center or uh, the core of can 
uh, at the center second day you can see like a, a some defect like like of a structure in the eyes and uh, here so these are pumped out and uh, replaced with fresh water okay cans or rectangular cross section and uh, slightly tapered inwards so they may be removed whatever the gas bubbles are there so they may be pumped out the gases can be evacuated and uh, here the cans or rectangular cross section if you see the cross section but it, it is a slightly tapered one okay, like a 1 is 200 scale they may be tapered slightly so why the complete uh, rectangular cross section is not taken here uh, for easy removal of a uh, ice cubes from the cans uh, that it is slightly tapered if it is slightly tapered so the ice cans can be removed very easily the removal of uh, ice cubes from the ice cans can be done very easily so here some hoist is provided to lift the cans from the tank why because it's a large volume ice cubes are provided or produced so to remove that some hoist is provided a arrangement is there to lift the cans just like a crane type of structure uh, it can be uh, to lift the can cans can be totally lifted okay from the brine tank which they are provided cans can be taken out and uh, further process of removal of ice cubes can be done okay so here it works on the principle of uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle as a uh, Again, the same thing. There is a main components like compressor, condenser, expansion valve, operator. So it is works on VCR cycle. Okay. Next, it uses ammonia as a ref primary refrigerant. So right. So here we can use the ammonia uh, as it is a industrial part of that, and uh, uh, to maintain less cost compared with the freon groups. So ammonia can be used as a refrigerant. Yeah. Ammonia is a primary refrigerant, and the brine solution as a secondary refrigerant so you can see here that brine solutions are uh, taken as the sodium chloride or calcium chloride solution just acts like it's a, a simple salt solution when it mixes with the uh, that water or mixes with the, uh, the ice which is formed there okay or whatever the cool uh, the water which is there or a cool solution which is there when it mixes with the, the CaCl or NaCl with the water it acts like a secondary refrigerant. Now, uh, for a smaller capacity plants, as I already told, that for a, it is a, for industrial purpose, producing very large uh, volume of ice, ice cubes here. Uh, if you use this uh, freon group of a refrigerant, it will cost more. So, to reduce the cost of that uh, production, what they are doing, they are using some a simplified uh, or uh, a easy. Uh, easy available of uh, the refrigerant that they are using that is ammonia okay whereas if r12 r22 r12 is used for domestic refrigerator r22 is for air conditioner for a very smaller capacity plan like 1 ton or 0.5 ton of capacity so uh, now whatever the ice cans we are telling here in the brine tank or evaporator tank the ice cans are filled with the water Okay, where the uh, are cooled by, by circulating the chilled brine. Uh, primarily, what we are doing here, whatever the, the cans containing the water is placed in inside the brine tank. Uh, around that, there is the piping system. You can see nothing but there are cooling coils or evaporator coils. Those evaporator coil carrying the primary refrigerant. That means ammonia. So primarily, it is cooling the uh, the solution which is present inside the evaporator tank, nothing but brine tank. It means the primary refrigerant first primarily cooling the brine solution. It means it is first cooling the secondary solution. It means brine solution is cooling. That brine solution in turn exchanging the heat in between the water which is present inside the cans and the, solu uh, the solution, uh, the brine solution which is present outside. So now what happens here brine is this is the point the brine is chilled by refrigerant in evaporating coils okay as the brine solution is cooled by the refrigerant then the high pressure vapor ammonia 
is delivered from compressor and enters the condenser okay we just, uh, just start uh, we'll move to this point first what happens here the prime solution will maintains very low temperature compared to the the primary refrigerant which is, which is giving its temperature first for example if it is giving like a minus uh, uh, 5 degrees like a minus 7 degrees like that now the brine solution after receiving its temperature it will maintain uh, less than minus 15 degrees or minus 20 degrees centigrade for a longer time still the power supply is not there the continuous supply of uh, refrigerant is not required here once the temperature is received by the brine solution it will maintain the temperature for longer time and it maintains very low temperature compared with the primary refrigerant okay so this is what happening in the brine tank or the uh, evaporator evaporator tanks now we will see some the basic principle again as you know that what happening in the compressor compression is taking place high pressure vapor ammonia is delivered from compressor right and it, then it enters into the condenser what happens in the condenser condensation will take place okay and uh, here it condensation means the vapor high pressure vapor is changing to the liquid form liquid state next uh, what happens here you know all the things what is that condenser fins are responsible where uh, it increases the, um, the surface area of contact will increases when you place the fins and uh, this uh, high pressure liquid ammonia that is a liquid refrigerant will enters into the receiver here it will collects or accommodates the refrigerant which is coming from the condenser and it will collect in the receiver then next it enters into the expansion wall through dryer we already seen what is the importance of a dryer it absorbs any a minor quantity of moisture which is present in the refrigerant or in the ammonia it readily absorbs the moisture if the particle which is present in the ammonia the water particle if it enters into the expansion wall very low temperatures are created in the expansion wall right due to its expansion so choking will take place must ensure this is a safety device is placed dryer you know regarding the expansion wall that is it reduces the pressure of the liquid ammonia further what happens the temperature gets reduces that decreased temperature liquid ammonia or liquid refrigerant then it enters into the evaporating coils or to, to the brine tank now it flows through the pipes or cooling coil which is placed around the ice cans okay during this what happens heat exchange will take place then that refrigerant ammonia liquid will get vaporized and it forms like ammonia vapor by taking the heat from the first it will takes the heat from the brine solution that vapor ammonia next it enters into the compressor part okay so further process what is happening here the cold brine it is provided around the cans so very low temperatures is uh, developing by the brine it is causing the ice formation which is uh, where the water is present in the ice cans okay. so this is regarding the how the ice is formed in the ice plant now uh, <clears throat> to just there some hoist is provided after the uh, forming ice ice cans can be completely removed out now that uh, cans are dipped in uh, some hot warm water this is some hot warm water or at, uh, some room temperature so they are dipped for some time okay now what happens a slight uh, a decrease in the volume of uh, that ice cubes can be taken place in the ice can small volume is decreased what happens it can be easily removed out okay so that process can be taken as it means removing of ice cubes from the ice cans by dipping the ice cans in the warm water for some time and removing out the ice cubes that process is known as a thawing operation okay rem remember that point that process is known as thawing operation so this is regarding the ice plant you know the applications where 
after producing the ice so ice where it can be used what is the purpose so there is a need to use the ice that is used to chill the cold drinks it is used for transportation of uh, perishable goods like dairy products fruits and fish etc okay so a lot of applications they may be used for uh, uh, like mortuaries also for storing uh, uh, regarding in the mortuary room and they may produce for a lot of applications okay etc and this is regarding the ice plant now if you see the continuation of uh, other application water cooler Okay. So coming to the explanation of the water cooler. So here, you know the purpose first. A simple purpose that is the why the water cooler is used. I think I have seen the water cooler at uh, different places, like uh, offices, colleges, schools. In lot of areas you can see in every shops you can uh, most of the shops are covering with water cooler mainly during in the summer season so hope uh, you can see a simple purpose of that is it will cool the water to the required temperature then it can be used for the drinking purpose okay so when the normal water is supplied to the water cooler then it will gives the cool water outside this is a simple purpose but at any time uh, have you thought how it is getting cool okay and what are the components involved in that uh, every time you switch on the power supply how it is getting cool okay just we look regarding that uh, in this uh, we will get clarified how it is getting cool so before that uh, some different types you can see regarding the water coolers like a, a storage type of uh, cooler or a instantaneous type of cooler okay so there are two types of water cooler storage type and instantaneous cooler <coughs> okay so here it's a just it is a storage type right what uh, that required quantity of water is uh, filled in the tank so those water can be uh, cooled it will get cooled if you observe uh, a continuous type it means the water is continuously supplying into the water cooler into the water cooler but the level of water cooler is maintained uh, with the help of a float valve there water level can be maintained with the help of float valve in the tank that is a continuous water supply type Okay. right so here if you take the storage cooler here uh, the cooling coil is wrapped around the water storage tank cold water available at all times so used where continuous water supply is not available okay it means uh, if you observe uh, here the continuous water supply is not available here in the storage tank as I already told water is just uh, filled to a required quantity so there is a uh, uh, there is a no continuous supply of water to the uh, store uh, some 10 liters of capacity of water cooler then 10 liters of water can be filled inside that so the total water can be uh, get cold and at every time you can get the cold water until the water get evacuated right so that is regarding the storage cooler so instantaneous means operator coil and water tubes run side by side in opposite direction so water is pulled to desired temperature as it reaches the tank okay. so you can take this is a continuous supply type instantaneous type okay right this is the line diagram of a a continuous water supply water cooler here instantaneous water cooler here it is not a storage type it is a uh, insta instantaneous it means continuous water supply will be there so just uh, see how it is a continuous supply is taking place here in this see at the bottom uh, first observe the components which are responsible for producing the cooling effect here that is a compressor you can see there is a discharge line at the right side uh, there is a condenser coil and to the condenser 
strainer is connected here and next strainer or dryer the next to the dryer you can see uh, a thin pipe is connected to the dryer that is nothing but a capillary tube then next to the capillary tube then it enters into the that is expansion device capillary tube then it enters into the evaporator box where the evaporator is completely filled with the, nothing but it is completely filled with the water around that the tubing can be seen here okay and uh, to this you can see there is a water inlet and other side you can see uh, in the same tank you can see the water outlet here so normal water inlet is taking place and at outlet there is a cold water is coming out so there may be water inlet at from the top or from the bottom some most of the cases it is taking from the top right next you can see from the evaporator or uh, you can see the top of the tank at the side you can see the pipeline it is coming here and uh, here the, just actually when the two the capillary tube and here this tube is uh, meet each other the heat exchange will take place it acts like a heat exchanger at this part and this pipeline is now making a suction line this suction line is making connected connection to the compressor so there is a suction line discharge line compressor strainer condenser capillary tube evaporator and other you can see here thermostat is also there thermostat okay and uh, a drain pipe is also provided the waste water outlet which is collected in a uh, basin here you can see the water basin is there where the cold water outlet is coming any waste water is uh, present here so a pipeline is connected here to collect that waste water to will be sent or drain outside now so here these are the main components of uh, water cooler compressor condenser strainer and uh, expansion device that is a capillary tube evaporator storage tank thermostat as already told the importance of thermostat it is a temperature adjustment uh, how much temperature uh, the water requirement is needed maybe 10 de 10 degrees or 15 degrees so you can adjust that thermostat switch it is a temperature control or temperature constant temperature maintaining uh, sensor it is thermostat <coughs> You can maintain the temperature at that particular point insulator so here that is the important thing around the tank you can see here where in between that water is present around that evaporator coil is there around that insulation is provided here insulator just like a glass wool or some thermocol is provided to avoid the heat exchange from surrounding to the inside okay there is a heat exchanger also So there is a storage tank so two types will be there actually storage and uh, another one is a continuous type you can consider like any type for example if water is continuously supplied there uh, from the overhead tank water is continuously coming and collecting in the tank that is a continuous type if you are storing the water for if you are not uh, utilizing that uh, water inlet pipe if you are, if the tank is filled and maintained for some time it is a storage type of water okay if it is a continuous type the water level is maintained constant with the help of a float valve what happens is continuously the water is coming if the float valve will maintain the valve will get closed if the level of the water is reached up to a certain level in the tank it will closes the valve and water inlet will be closed no water will be uh, enter into the tank again if uh, cold water outlet is open and water is uh, completing the wall the float wall will come downwards and the water inlet will get opens and the water will come continuously and collect in the tank that is a continuous type storage type in the sense if you are filling for 10 liters of capacity it is if uh, the water filled 10 liter capacity so it is a storage type okay insulation is provided around the tank to prevent heat transfer next coils of evaporator are fitted around the tank compressor condenser units are mounted at the bottom side why because uh, you can see 
at the bottom side why it means you can see a condenser fan is also provided at the bottom side it's a forced air circulation type uh, both are high pressure side system so they are placed at the bottom side and fan will be provided around so thermostat is provided here to control the temperature in the water tank next here how the working this working is very important in this case so r2 well refrigerant is used as a refrigerant in the compressor now again the same process in the compressor compression take place high pressure and high temperature vapor refrigerant from compressor enters the condenser part and in the condenser what happens phase change is taking place from vapor refrigerant to the liquid refrigerant with high pressure where it enters into the strainer or dryer come strainer so here by air cooling the medium we are using is air it may be forced or natural mostly we are using the forced type by placing the fan and this liquid refrigerant enters the expansion device expansion device here what you are using the capillary tube strainer it avoids any foreign particles which are coming from the condenser with high pressure the dryer is used to remove the moisture content then uh, the capillary tube decreases the pressure and temperature of the liquid refrigerant okay simultaneously pressure is dropped means temperature will also get dropped here. so heat exchanger is provided to heat gain from capillary tube so what are the heat with high heat it is uh, transmitting from the entry of the capillary tube that heat is carried by the other side of the pipe which is uh, that is a through the suction line next uh, the low pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant is made to pass through the cooling coil right so what happens in the evaporator it absorbs the heat from the water in the tank and uh, the water gets cooled and then the temperature is uh, taken by the uh, the refrigerant which is flowing in the cooling coil and get evaporated that vapor refrigerant from the evaporator coil then it again return back to the compressor so this is how the water is getting cooled uh, thermostat will what it will do is if you are maintaining temperature like of adjusting the temperature to 12 degree centigrade or 15 degree centigrade if in the evaporator tank the water reaches the 15 degree centigrade for example if both the temperature the thermostatic control wall temperature and the water temperature inside the tank if it reaches the level tem temperature level is same then it it automatically switch off the power supply to the compressor compressor will not run here then the system will stops then after that continuous usage of the water some uh, or after some time what happens the temperature drop will take place in the tank again this thermostat will sense the temperature of the water inside that there, there is a temperature difference what we have adjusted and uh, the temperature uh, of water in the tank there is a difference then automatically it will uh, supply the power to the switch on the supply uh, to the compressor compressor will automatically starts again it will happens automatically at every time to maintain the temperature what we have adjusted with the help of the thermostatic control valve so this is regarding the water cooler right so here coming what we have discussed here that is uh, regarding the working of ice plant applications of ice the working of water cooler so these are very few basic things what you have discussed uh, in today's class and i hope uh, i have understood the topic of uh, applications of uh, refrigeration like the in today's session that is a uh, water cooler and ice plant let us see some quiz questions how much you, you have understood if you answer this answer this you can understand uh, hope uh, you have understood well in this video session so just uh, have a look regarding this so this is out of question what you are not discussed in this so you can note the answer from this the boiling temperature of r12 so dichloro difluoromethane is so minus 33 minus 78.5 minus 29.8 degree centigrade minus 40.7 degrees centigrade. so the boiling temperature of r12 is minus 29.8 8 degrees centigrade that is the answer the most suitable refrigerant for a commercial water cooler is that is the answer 
is a suitable R2L. R2L is very suitable one. Commercial formula for R2L is okay, CCL2F2. It is a dichloro difluoro methane. CCL2F2. Commercial formula for R2L refrigerant is CCL2F2. Next, the moisture in a refrigerant is removed by. So, what is the answer? Evaporator, dehumidifier, dryer, expansion wall. So, in the refrigerant system, we are using mainly dryer. Dryer is used to remove the moisture content from the refrigeration system. Next, the most suitable refrigerant for a commercial ice plant is most suitable refrigerant for a commercial ice plant is what is it answer is ammonia okay then first you have to tell regarding the uh, the primary refrigerant that is ammonia we are using then the secondary refrigerant is most suitable in the ice plant is the brine solution okay uh, just uh, give a simple example regarding this ice plant or uh, the brine solution uh, the seller at the outside, those who are those who are selling the ice, uh, what are some ice fruits at the outside? On the uh, at the outside, so they are uh, they are usually using the the rock salt, rock salt around the ice cubes. If you see that, so they are selling the ice cream at the outside. They are pouring some ice, uh, sorry, that uh, uh, this rock salt around the uh, that ice creams. You can taste here some salt, salty type of taste at uh, at some time when you purchase at the outside, right? So that is nothing but he is uh, pouring that that rock salt is nothing but that um, uh, that solution like a uh, salt solution. So that is a NaCl, right? That is a uh, sodium chloride solution mixed along with that uh, ice cubes which are provided around that or with the water when they mix together that low temperatures can be maintained for a longer time without use of a power supply you can maintain for longer time usage that is the use of the brine solution okay. next you will see some frequently asked questions so draw a neat sketch of water cooler and explain its working the very simple one and next one is what is the function of capillary tube in water cooler this is also second question next what is the purpose of the heat exchanger in water cooler? What is the purpose of heat exchanger in water cooler? Simply you can write where where it meets heat exchanger pipes. One is at the liquid line, and the other pipeline is coming from the that is the suction line. So one is a hot line, other one is a cool line. Both the heat exchange will take place. So you can see in the water cooler capillary tubes also. Just you can explain it very simply as function of capillary. Similar ice plant, draw the layout of an ice plant and explain the manufacturing of ice. How the ice is produced. I have told that how the ice ice cans are removed by providing some hoist arrangement like cranes. The cans will be removed out and uh, for removing the ice cubes from the ice cans, that is a thawing operation. How you can see from the this video session. You can draw the layout of an ice plant. You can see from the video session. So what is the industrial application of ice? Okay. Seen, we have seen some applications of ice, storing the perishable products, uh, food like that. A lot of applications we have seen. Okay, so this is regarding the today's uh, video session. And uh, in the next video session, uh, we'll try to complete uh, this uh, chapter regarding this uh, refrigeration equipment and uh, applications of refrigeration. And the next uh, we'll see the how the the dry ice production will take place and we'll see some cold storage plant also we'll see the line diagram of that and uh, we can conclude this chapter so hope you have understood the today's video session regarding the ice plant and water cooler and uh, 